for right now. Cargo bay doors have been opened. The shuttle is actually flying now. Wouldn't have the, the solid uh, rocket boosters or anything attached to it here, but it's actually flying upside down. If there is an upside down, the bay doors would be opened and the thermal bottom of the shuttle facing the sun to protect it and those cargo bay doors open facing the earth as it flies around. Of course, there's no upside down in space, uh, but to us, it's upside down with those cargo bay doors open. Uh, Natalie, uh, so right now, again, uh, one little problem that they are working, but other than that, uh, astronauts uh, John Glenn on orbit again after 36 years. Natalie? And John, this problem with the possible problem with the drag chute door, could that possibly affect where the shuttle lands? It certainly could if they found out that there was a serious issue with the drag chute itself, that they might have a problem with deploying it. The option would always be to go to Edwards Air Force Base, the dry lake bed out there, which gives them a lot more margin for error on the lake bed than it does here at the controlled landing strip. Although it's long and it's wide here, they're a lot more comfortable when they have problems to go back to Edwards. Uh, so that is certainly an option that they, they might have at the end of this mission. And, Natalie? And John, yes, no. uh, uh, although there is a question uh, if uh, this uh, piece of equipment may have uh, hit one of the engines, that really uh, wouldn't uh, be a problem for them, would it? No, I mean, the engines now are cut off, and they're really of no use any longer. You don't power up again. The vehicle is basically a glider going around the Earth, uh, and then when they come back, they use their retro rockets for their deorbit burn, but the main engines are, are of no consequence any longer, Lou. Right, so the maneuvering jets are, you know, not, not part of that system. Uh, so no. that so that wouldn't be a problem. We, I've just been informed uh, by our producer that we've located a piece of tape uh, where we can see this uh, drag chute door coming off, and we're getting that prepared. We'll have that in, in just a couple of minutes. John Zarella, we'll be back to you at the Kennedy Space Center. The space shuttle program has come a long way over the years, marking many a milestone. But it hasn't always been easy. Here's CNN's Tony Clark with a look at the program's successes and setbacks. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. Since the first launch 17 and a half years ago, the space shuttle program has soared to tremendous heights. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. And it has fallen to cavernous lows. There have been 91 shuttle missions prior to Glenn's flight. Crews have spent a total of 783 days in orbit, performing experiments, launching satellites, retrieving satellites, and repairing them. They've practiced building a space station and linked up with the Russian Mir space station to learn what it's like to live and work on one. With the deployment of the Hubble Space Telescope in 1990, the shuttle helped astronomers look out into the heavens. And over the years, astronauts have returned to Hubble to give it an even clearer view. The doors just sprung open. Sure did. The space shuttle has provided a number of firsts for the U.S. space program. Sally Ride became the first American woman to fly in space in 1983. Nine years later, the crew of Endeavour included the first African-American woman in space the first Japanese astronaut, and the first married couple on the same flight. The shuttle has offered scientists from around the world the opportunity to work in space and to show people in their homeland the peculiarities and the benefits of working in weightlessness. While the shuttle has been a workhorse for NASA, it has not always lived up to its promise. John Glenn's flight is only the fourth shuttle mission this year. There were twice as many last year. The Spartan satellite was put on Glenn's flight because it failed to operate properly on a mission last year. In 1996, there was an Italian satellite that broke its tether and floated off. A fuel cell problem cut short one mission, and bad weather and woodpeckers have kept the shuttle on the ground. In some respects, the shuttle program has even suffered from its own success. Over the years, public interest has waned as flights seem to become routine. NASA hopes John Glenn will help turn that around. Tony Clark, CNN, Johnson Space Center. And when we come back, again, we'll have the video of that drag chute door popping off during today's liftoff. We'll be back.